Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving charging and discharging of a capacitor. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous theory videos covering charging of a capacitor experiment, discharging of a capacitor experiment, and factors affecting charging and discharging time, as watching these videos will help you understand what we're about to do. So let's get started. Question one says that the switch in the following circuit is closed. So we've got a switch here, we've got a 12 volt battery, an ammeter in series with a one mega ohm resistor and a 2200 microfarad capacitor. And we've got a voltmeter in parallel with the capacitor. It then says immediately after closing the switch, what is the A charging the capacitor and B reading on the voltmeter? Well, as soon as you close the switch, there hasn't been enough time for charge to build up on the capacitor plates. So we could say that the charge Q is equal to zero coulombs. Similarly for part B, as soon as you close the switch, there hasn't been enough time for the potential difference across the capacitors to start increasing, so we could say that initially the potential difference V is equal to zero volts. Part C says immediately after closing the switch, what is the potential difference across the one mega ohm resistor? Well, remember looking at the diagram, these things are in series, so we've got a potential divider circuit. So if the potential difference across the capacitor is zero to begin with, then the resistor must have all of the potential difference from the battery to begin with. So we can say that this is 12 volts across the one mega ohm resistor. And for D, as soon as the switch is closed, what is the current in the one mega ohm resistor? Well, we can calculate this maximum current that's flowing in the circuit as soon as you close the switch. So we're trying to find the current I. We know the potential difference across the resistor VR is equal to 12 volts and we know the resistor of resistance R is equal to 1 mega ohm. So we can rewrite this as 1 times 10 to the 6 ohms. So writing down our equation for ohms law, we have V equals IR, but I've written this in terms of the subscript VR for the resistor. So VR equals IR. Rearranging for I, we can divide both sides by R to get I equals VR over R. Substituting in the numbers gives 12 divided by 1 times 10 to the 6, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 amps. For part E, it says when the capacitor is fully charged, what is the reading on the voltmeter? Well, this is going to be 12 volts. And remember that's because when the capacitor is fully charged, the potential difference across it is equal to the supply voltage. And for part F, when the capacitor is fully charged, what is the charge stored in the capacitor? Well, we can calculate this. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the charge Q. We know the capacitance C is 2200 microfarads, which we can rewrite as 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and the potential difference V is 12 volts when fully charged. So writing down our equation relating charge, capacitance, and potential difference for a capacitor, we have C equals Q over V. Rearranging for Q, we can multiply C and V together to get Q equals CV. Substituting in the numbers gives us 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 times 12, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 2.6 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs. Part G says when the capacitor is fully charged, what is the energy stored in the capacitor? Well, we can calculate this using one of our known energy equations. So we're trying to find the energy E. We know that the capacitance C is 2200 microfarads, which again is 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. We know that the potential difference V is 12 volts. So writing down our equation for energy in terms of capacitance and potential difference, we have E equals a half CV squared. Substituting in the numbers gives half times 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 times 12 squared, and putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 0.16 joules. Part H then says, based on your above results, sketch a graph of the potential difference across the capacitor against time from the instant switch S is closed. Numerical values are required on the y-axis only. Well, if you were to sketch your graph of potential difference across the capacitor against time, it should look something like this. So remember, potential difference across the capacitor is going to increase over time for the charging case, and we can show it going up to a maximum value here. So we need to show this maximum value on the y-axis. So let me use a dashed line just to show where that point is, and we can label this as 12 volts. Lastly, part I says the 2200 microfarad capacitor is now replaced with a 1100 microfarad capacitor. So that means the capacitance is being halved. It then says to sketch in your graph to part H to show how the potential difference across the capacitor varies with time for this adapted circuit. Label both curves. So what we need to identify here is that firstly, capacitance decreases. So this means that the time taken for charge to build up on the capacitor plates decreases and therefore the time taken for the potential difference across the capacitor to reach 12 volts will also decrease. So plotting this on our graph from part H, if this is our curve here from part H for 2200 microfarads, then for our 1100 microfarad capacitor for part I, our curve would look something like this, where it's increasing up to its maximum value in a shorter time. And that's because 
We've said that capacitance decreases, so the time taken for the charge to build up in the plates will decrease, and therefore the potential difference will take a shorter time to reach its maximum value. So let's label that blue curve there as the 1100 microfarad capacitor for part I. Question 2 says that a student sets up the circuit shown to investigate the charging of a capacitor. So you can see here we've got a switch, a 9 volt battery, a variable resistor in series with an ammeter and a capacitor of 2200 microfarads. It then says the battery has an EMF of 9.0 volts and negligible internal resistance. Initially the capacitor is uncharged and the variable resistor RV is set to 12 kiloohms. Part A says that switch S is now closed and the capacitor charges. Sketch a graph of the current in the circuit against time from the moment the switch is closed until the capacitor is fully charged. Numerical values are only required on the current axis. Well, in order to find the current value that's going on the y-axis, we need to do a calculation. So we need to first find the maximum current in the circuit. So we're trying to find I max. We know that Vs, the supply voltage, is 9.0 volts, and we know the resistance of resistor R is 12 kiloohms. So we can rewrite this in terms of ohms as 12 times 10 to the 3 ohms. And writing down our equation for Ohm's law, we have V equals IR, but I'm going to write this with the subscripts of Vs equals I max times R, just to keep us right. And we can rearrange for I max. So dividing both sides by R, we get I max equals Vs over R. Substituting in the numbers gives us 9.0 divided by 12 times 10 to the 3. So putting this into your calculator gives a final answer of 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. And you can then put that onto your graph. So your sketch should look something like this. So you've got current against time showing current decreasing over time and on the y-axis we can show that the maximum current over here shown with the dashed line is a value of 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And of course it will be zero at the origin down here. Part B says that capacitors have an insulator between their plates. Explain why there is a current in the circuit during the charging process. Well we can say that electrons flow in all of the wires because they are repelled from the negative terminal of the power supply to one plate of the capacitor and are attracted off the other plate towards the positive terminal of the power supply. Part C then says at one instant during the charging process, the current in the 12 kilo ohm resistor is 5.0 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Calculate the charge stored on the capacitor at this time. Well, in order to find the charge stored in the capacitor, we need to know the potential difference across the capacitor, but we don't know enough data to find that yet. So first we need to find the voltage across the resistor, which we can call V subscript R. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find VR. We know that the current I is 5.0 times 10 to the minus 4 amps at this point, and the resistance of resistor R is 12 kilo ohms, which we can rewrite as 12 times 10 to the 3 ohms. So writing down our equation for Ohm's law, VR equals IR, we can substitute in the numbers to get 5.0 times 10 to the minus 4 times 12 times 10 to the 3, and putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 6 volts. Now we can find the voltage across the capacitor VC, doing a simple subtraction. So remember, because we've got a potential divider circuit, the capacitor and the variable resistor will take a share of the supply voltage. So if we know that at this particular time, the potential difference across the variable resistor is 6 volts, then we can work out via a simple subtraction, 9 minus 6 will give us the potential difference across the capacitor. So it should be 3 volts. So let's just show that. So we have VC is equal to VS minus VR, where VS is the 9 volt supply voltage minus the 6 volts across the resistor that we just worked out, which gives us VC is equal to 3 volts. So lastly, we can calculate the charge Q on the capacitor plates. So charge Q is what we're trying to find. C, the capacitance is 2200 microfarads, which is the same as 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and the potential difference across the capacitor VC is equal to 3 volts. So we can write down our equation, C equals Q over VC. Rearranging for Q, we can multiply these two together to get Q equals C times VC. And substituting in the numbers gives us 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 times 3. And putting that into your calculator should give a final answer of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. Lastly, part D says the variable resistor is adjusted to a resistance greater than 12 kiloohms. Switch S is closed and the capacitor charges again. And for part 1, explain what effect, if any, this increase in resistance has on the maximum potential difference across the capacitor. Well, we should realise that increasing the resistance will have no effect on the maximum potential difference across the capacitor. And that's because it depends only on the supply voltage. Because remember, the potential difference across the capacitor when it's fully charged will be equal to the potential difference of the supply voltage. Because remember, the potential difference across a capacitor when it's fully charged will be equal to the potential difference of the supply. And for part 
to explain what effect, if any, this increase in resistance has on the maximum current in the circuit. Well, you should be thinking that resistance will affect current, because remember resistance is the opposition to current flow, so they're essentially opposites. So what we'll find is that if resistance in the circuit increases, then the maximum current decreases. And the reason for this is that the maximum current I max depends on both the supply voltage and the series resistance. Lastly, question 3 says that in the circuit shown below, the 100 microfarad capacitor is initially charged to a potential difference of 12 volts. So you can see here there's no battery or no supply, but we've got a 100 microfarad capacitor in series with an ammeter, which is also in series with a switch and a 120 kilo ohm resistor. We've then got a voltmeter in parallel with the resistor. Part A then says the switch is now closed. Show that the initial value of the current in the circuit is 100 microamps. Well, we're trying to find the maximum current here at IMAX. We know that Vs, the supply voltage to begin with, which is the voltage across the capacitor to begin with, is equal to 12 volts. And we know that the resistance R equals 120 kilo ohms, which we can rewrite as 120 times 10 to the 3 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have V equals IR for Ohm's law, which we're writing in terms of Vs, the supply voltage, and the maximum current. So rearranging for I max, we divide both sides by R to get I max equals Vs over R. Substituting in the numbers, we get 12 over 120 times 10 to the 3, which gives an answer of 1 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Or we can rewrite this in microamps as we're being asked to show in the question. So this equals 100 microamps. Part B says to sketch a graph of the current in the circuit against time from the moment the switch is closed until the capacitor is fully discharged. Numerical values are only required on the current axis. Well remember, the graph for current against time for a discharging capacitor should look something like this where you've got current on the y-axis against time on the x-axis, and we're in the negative quadrant here in the negative currents. So we have a negative current decreasing from a maximum negative value up to zero. And we know what this maximum negative current is because we just worked it out in part A. So it's the minus 100 microamps or minus 100 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. Part C says after a certain time the current in the resistor is 35 microamps. Calculate the potential difference across the resistor at this instant. Well writing down we know from the question we're trying to find VR, the potential difference across the resistor. We know the current in the resistor is 35 microamps which is the same as 35 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. And we know the resistance of the resistor R is 120 kilo ohms. So we can rewrite this as 120 times 10 to the 3 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have Ohm's law VR equals IR. Substituting in the numbers gives 35 times 10 to the minus 6 times 120 times 10 to the 3. Putting this into your calculator should give you an answer of 4.2 volts. Part D then says to calculate the quantity of charge stored by the capacitor when the current in the circuit is 35 microamps. Well, to do this, we first need to find the voltage across the capacitor VC. So remember, looking at the circuit diagram, we've got a potential divider circuit where the capacitor and resistor are in series, so they're both going to take a share of the initial 12 volt supply. So if the voltage across my resistor is 4.2 volts, then via a simple subtraction, I can find what the voltage across the capacitor is. Writing this as VC equals VS minus VR, we can sub in the numbers to get 12 from the supply voltage minus 4.2 across the resistor, which gives a voltage across the capacitor of 7.8 volts. And now we can calculate the charge Q. So we're trying to find Q. We know that C is 100 microfarads, which is the same as 100 times 10 to the minus 6 farads and Vc is 7.8 volts. So writing down our equation, we have C equals Q over Vc. Rearranging for Q, we can multiply these two together to get Q equals C times Vc. Substituting in the numbers gives 100 times 10 to the minus 6 times 7.8, and putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 7.8 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. Lastly, part E says to sketch a graph to show how the potential difference across the capacitor varies with time as the capacitor discharges. Numerical values are only required on the y-axis. Well, remember the graph for potential difference across the capacitor against time for the discharging case should look something like this, where you've got potential difference across the capacitor decreasing over time. And we need to label on the maximum potential difference here on the y-axis, so we can say at this dashed line here it's 12 volts. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.